How are you, Dan? Good, Rich. Good to be with you. Right. Happy holidays. Yeah, happy holidays and Merry Christmas to you, too. So uh, are, have you been like the rest of us in the national media, sometimes forgetting that they're no longer the San Diego Chargers and still calling them that, having to catch yourself? <laughs> I do that once uh, a week. No. I, I'm very proud that I have not called them San Diego once. Uh, really? Uh, well, yeah. I, I, I haven't called them Los Angeles either. <laughs> <laughs> now that hey. is funny. That is it funny. Just chargers to me, you know, and uh, it always be my San Diego Chargers, but there's somebody else's now. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's. Uh, what do you think of those scenarios that I just posited? Which one do you think is the most realistic to prevent the Patriots from hosting an AFC Championship game, losing to Buffalo this weekend, or to either Kansas City or Baltimore in the uh, divisional weekend? Yeah, I think uh, you know you talk about history. That's important, uh, no question. But Baltimore and Harbaugh there. Kansas City looks like uh, they're back to when they were five and zero and looking like the best team in the league. And it was a long time ago when they, you know, they spanked the Patriots, but they did spank them. So they they do have a plan that will work. Uh, you know, so either of those two, I guess I'll hedge there. I'm not sure about Buffalo uh, beating them this weekend. Well, you know, uh, that one would be obviously the most far fetched one. And should Buffalo lose this one, it's entirely possible that the Chargers. Um, would be able to make the playoffs since they've already gotten a head-to-head -head win against the team that decided for one week to try Nathan Peterman. That might be something that uh, they'll be regretting uh, all uh, off-season long. What do you think about the Chargers' chances uh, to, to make the playoffs and make a run after seeing what they looked like against Kansas City, however, in Week 15, Dan? Well, that, that was a problem. I, I expect that uh, this will be a, a very competitive game uh, this weekend with the Jets just because – the Jets seem to have settled down, and, and Todd Bowles seems to be in place for the near future. So I, I think all that talk uh, will help the team. Uh, and they played pretty well against New Orleans last week, running the ball especially, and that has been a weakness for the Chargers all year, uh, is stopping the run. So, again, it, it's one of those games where uh, the team that scores early and, and establishes control gets that momentum, that good vibe going. Usually at the end of the season – they win the ball game. So th I think that's the important thing to keep your eye on, not only in this game, but in a lot of games this weekend. Which is the best team you've personally laid eyeballs on this year, Dan? Because you also call uh, games on Westwood One Radio. You've seen a ton of teams in front of you. Which is the best team? Well, it's hard to uh, go against New England. Uh, we've seen them a number of times. And, uh, you know, Tom Brady, I think, is having just a, a fabulous year. Uh, at a, one point, I thought it was perhaps his best year. Uh, but, uh, you know, after what happened last week, it, uh, you can see, you know, he is 40 years old and, uh, against any strong pass rush, it's going to bother any quarterback. And he kind of proved he's, he's human last weekend, but their resiliency, their ability to win games coming from behind, uh, all the things that have made them champions so many times, they're all still there. Well, I mean, and that's why I think a lot of people are looking at what's going on this week with his trainer, that uh, Bill Belichick kicked the trainer out for the exception of him uh, only training Tom on the facility and everyone else has got to see him elsewhere, that we're trying to see if this is something behind the scenes that could be something that manifests itself on the field, Dan. I mean, did you ever have a situation when you were playing uh, that you saw teammates or yourself had something going on that, Coriel or somebody ought to step in and, and, and change things up mid season. No, we didn't have a lot of things they have nowadays. I bet. Uh, personal trainers. Are you kidding me? No, uh, just, just anything. We, yeah, no, I, I know what you're saying. Um, no, we, it was different back then. Obviously there just so many other dis, uh, distractions nowadays for players and opportunities that uh, just didn't present themselves back then. But uh, I, I would be more concerned with the Patriots' decision to not hang on to Jimmy Garoppolo a little bit longer. Huh. He, looks, he looks like the real deal, doesn't he? Yeah, I, look, I, I love what I'm seeing out of him. And just looking at them as a first-place schedule next year, uh, a last-place schedule next year, the longest road trip they have, the only time that they go to the eastern time zone uh, on the east coast is one trip to Tampa. They face the Chargers in Southern California. I'll, I'll do you the solid by not even mentioning the town there. Uh, next year. I think they've got a chance with a top five pick and the way he's playing to maybe even make the playoffs next year, Dan. Well, yeah. And you look at Seattle's situation and, and Arizona is still a little bit in flux too. So 
you know, the Rams and 49ers, that would be great to renew that great rivalry that, uh, that they've had for so many years. And uh, the Rams, they definitely are the real deal. And the 49ers always seem to play them well. So you don't think there's anything to do with Brady and the trainer and, and the coach in New England, Dan? I hope not. Um, you know, I, I I don't know. But, you know, it's one of those you, – you try to get information out of New England, as we all know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's difficult, to say the least. All right. Dan Fouts joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. Uh, when you played, we knew what a catch was pretty much. Um, and, <laughs> you know, we had Mike Pereira, the former head of NFL refs in studio, saying that when he even refed in 96 that what we saw at the end of the Steelers-Patriots game would have been ruled a catch. Uh, where do you stand on uh, on the 21st century catch rule with instant replay involved, Dan? I stand confused. Um, each week I get more confused. Uh, there are things you can do as a running back to break the plane and then lose the ball and it's a touchdown. Uh, there are times when you can go into the end zone as a runner and only have one foot in the end zone and it's a touchdown. You can fly over the pylon and lose control of the ball and it's a touchdown. Uh, so th- they really have to take a real hard look at, uh, at what's going on and maybe just going back to the judgment of the officials on the field as it used to be and not leaving it to uh, guys in the studio who have, you know, slow motion, uh, and all these type of, uh, you know, tools to work with, let's, let's get back to the human element of the game and uh, let it go at that. I don't think anybody would argue on either side, uh, you know, in that game with, with the Steelers uh, that that was a touchdown. Uh, I just don't understand uh, why we can't, you know, players make mistakes, coaches make mistakes, officials are going to make mistakes. It's a human game. Mistakes are bound to happen. Uh, but when you take the human element out of it and put it in, you know, the robot's hands, uh, then you get confusion. So what would you do? I mean, because as you know, CBS and Fox and ESPN uh, and NBC have some of the greatest technology in the world. We're showing it to Joe and Jane Sixpack at home. We should just not have replay at all when it comes to the goal line, do you think, Dan? Or what's your stance on that? No, I think you you still need replay. There are obviously uh, you know, really good uses for it. I just think that when there's a, a, a question as to catch, no catch, you know, let the officials on the field have the last say. You know, we, we have the official going over looking at a, a, a you know a pad, a, pad, a tablet, and really he's, he's got no decision. All he's doing is is making a uh, you know a charade out of it. Because it's the decision being made in New York that uh, will stand. All right, Dan, uh, have a good uh, Christmas in uh, in Houston. I know you're calling the game on Westwood One, and we'll see the Chargers and the Jets uh, this coming weekend and, and tell Ian we sent the same. Appreciate you having me on, Rich. Always, Dan. Love our chats. That's Dan Fouts, Pro Football Hall of Famer. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.